Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and this is the start of a new build of the Apollo Saturn V. Uh, this is the Revel 144 kit, and um, yeah, hopefully just quite a quick build. It's going to be probably three or four episodes. Um, and yeah, it's the, the Saturn V. Uh, it's got a bit of blurb on here from from them, uh, 16th of July at 1969, 9.32am, the most important voyage in human history started. The liftoff of the gigantic Saturn V from Cape Canaveral. Uh, the build itself is, as I say, the Revel kit. Um, it actually comes in stages. So you've got the, the landing pad, uh, the lower first stage, second stage, third stage, and there's even a little, uh, the lunar lander module. The eagle. Uh, so, uh, paint is pretty easy on this. It's black and white. Uh, now, painting white is is a big pain, a big problem. So, what I'm strongly considering doing, and as ever, it's likely that the plans will change. But I'm planning on priming it in white, and hopefully leaving it in white, and then just put the black over the top. Uh, so. As ever, on with the build. I'll uh, get some bits off the sprues. Um, the landing pad itself isn't on a sprue, it's just as is. Um, I've started taking off some edges. Uh, it's quite an old kit and there's quite a bit of flash as you can see. There's, uh, yeah, so quite a bit of clean up to do on this kit. Uh, this is obviously the base with the, the first section, first stage. Um, all in all, it's not bad. There's there's not really any detail to speak of on the entire kit because there's not much detail on the rocket. There's the ribbing on here is quite nice. Uh, inside, what have we got? The most detail. Excuse the scratching. Uh, obviously, we've got the the legs for the the lander there and the lander itself. A little bit rounded, not nice sharp edges as I would hope for, but we do what we can. Uh, so uh, as ever. I'll get some bits cut off the sprue and get them started. Uh, I'm going to start off on this one doing the, the first section, the first stage, uh, and obviously onto the base. And then hopefully, uh, assuming the time works out, uh, the next bit will be the second stage, and then the third stage, and hopefully then sort of the lander and finishing painting. Uh, so, see you in a moment when I've got some bits ready to go together, and uh, back in a minute. All right, that's I think all the bits ready for the first stage. Uh, basically, we've got a tube, the rocket bit at the bottom, and a little collar piece on the top. Uh, inside that goes a dome, and on the bottom of the thruster bit, you've got basically that piece, which on it has got five these nozzles which come in two pieces and they go together something like that now there is obviously quite a seam line visible around there I will be getting rid of it somewhat but when they're actually put together and on the bottom there on the launch pad they actually go through the launch pad so you can't actually see them anyway because that piece obviously clips on like that. So I will be doing what I can with it, but I'm not overly worried about them. Uh, first things first, all five of these are going to be stuck together uh, using the normal extra thin. Uh, basically running it over, getting it into the little holes, especially there where the pegs go, and just along the seam as well. And getting those stuck together, get them properly lined up, and then just adding some more extra thin along the seam. So that is that one. Uh, these obviously need painting before assembly because they're different to everything else. So I'm going to get all of those assembled. Oh, the other bit that I've got here is the outside fin pieces that just sort of push in on there, something like that, basically like that, but further in. 
which go around the outside. Uh, so I'm going to get those assembled, get everything ready, and uh, then get it primed, ready for painting. And that's the first bit of priming done. I have done uh, the thrusters in black, as well as the interior, sort of the ends of the tubes, top and bottom ends. Uh, I have also done a bit of very rough uh, pre-shading just on the end bits and sort of up the side of the, let's say, very rough. Pre-shading is not my thing. I need to practice it, so I figured this was as good a place as any. Uh, so I'm going to get those done, and then when this is all dry, because it's literally just finished, still got me glove on, um, when this is finished, uh, when it's dry, I shall go and do them in the proper colours. Uh, cover all of the white bits in white primer. Uh, yeah, need to prime them white first, and then possibly go over the seams again when I get it assembled. Uh, the interior piece is green. Uh, as is the base, for some reason. I don't know why they do it in green, they just do. Uh, the thrusters are obviously metallic with, uh, I think, a lot of an oxidised red sort of inside. So that would be my uh, sort of rust priming colour. Uh, and then it's assembly time. And then sort of touching up with the white and then masking off for the black. And so uh, I'll get that, well, leave that for a bit to dry. Go and do some real world things. Uh, actually, I forgot to do this. I shall just prime this. The base obviously needs to be in black and then grey. So I'll do that now. And then uh, see you in a bit. Okay, I've painted the, the thruster bells. The inside in my surface primer, which is a nice sort of rusty rusty red. Uh, and the outside in chrome. Uh, steel, sorry. Steel, very similar. But um, I've deliberately not gone heavy on it. I've gone just enough to cover it, but without making it really shiny. So it looks a bit worn and used. Uh, change of plan with the other pieces. I primed them in black and then did them in green, but you couldn't really see the green. It came out very dark. So I've gone over them again in the, in the steel. Uh, again, not heavily, just lightly, just to give me a different base. So when they're dry, I shall put the green over the top of that and see how that looks. But apart from that, it's coming together. Um, obviously, I, until they're painted, I can't put them into the the tube and get on with that and that's the next bit so I'm waiting on paint to dry sitting here watching it uh, getting on with the rest of the the thrusters are all done um, so they will go onto the base here like that at and when and then they'll be hidden up in the, the base itself which I have now primed in black and need to do in uh, Grey, a couple of different shades of grey. The centre piece is a different colour. And then this nice plaque across the front has got the, the decal on it for the nameplate. Uh, so I'm going to sit here and watch this paint dry. I won't make you watch it with me. You can imagine it happening, and I'll join you again when I've got the green on it. Okay, that's the green's come out much better than that. I'm not sure how well it's coming out in the picture. Let's uh, put another light on. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll be putting these into place on there using the normal extra thin. Get lots of coverage around the top there. Uh, basically they're all identical. So the five of those just going in place on there. And then that we'll go back into the the bottom of the base. I still got to tidy that up a little bit. I had some paint splatter on that um, where I've been trying to prime it a little bit across the top here where I've been getting some of the, the extra bits. So I need to tidy that up. The main bodies, again, a little bit of paint splatter on a couple of bits. So I'll be tidying those up when I get them together. So I'm going to get these bases on here, uh, get the tubes together and get the top and the bottom fitted to them. Then I can worry about tidying it all up. Uh, apart from that, that's it. Um, I'm just about to paint the base gray. So uh, we'll see that in a moment. All right, I've touched up the edges around there. That's looking a little bit better. Still need that to dry. The thruster bits are all glued on in place. That needs to go into that bit over there. So again, can't do anything with that at the moment. I'll leave that aside. 
Uh, the top ring has been primed in white, looking fine. The green of the top dome is looking good. The main tube itself still needs touching up, but I can do that when it's together. So I need to go over the edges anyway. So uh, the base, I've got a single grey done. I need to do the darker grey on the top piece, so I need to mask that when this is fully dry. So again, that can move out of the way. Uh, the next bit to do is fitting these bits together. Uh, so this has got a, a ridge in the top here, which that needs to sit into like that. And then the top bit goes in. I did prime the inside of this top piece in white because obviously that, when it comes apart, is going to be visible in the top. Not overly visible, but I thought I'd better give it a coat of white just to be sure. Uh, now with this, again, as ever, just using the extra thin, I'm just going to give that edge a coat there. Then I can get that in. I didn't bother doing anything with the inside of this because that's obviously not going to have any paint on it or anything. It's going to be sealed up inside. So that bit goes on there. This bit then goes on there. Now it's obviously quite a big bit so I can't do much gluing to begin with because it's just going to evaporate before I get there. So I'm actually just going to glue these pegs and holes get that lined up and held together while that sets and then obviously from the top you can see it looks okay the bottom is where that bit comes into play that basically fits into there so that's another bit to worry about soon yeah this is where the the priming didn't go quite according to plan, so that needs some attention, but so does this whole seam. Anyway, so I'm going to add some more extra thin in that seam, just touching it to the edge while it's slightly open, and then I can close it, and that should make a good tight fit then I can do the other side in a moment and then I can basically give it a quick sand try and get rid of that edge line and then obviously get rid of this blob of paint down here as well and then get rid of the uh, give it another little blast of priming while it's together being careful not to prime from above to get them green that is getting there a bit more in there. Uh, so I'm going to sit and hold this for a bit and get that glued together. Uh, then I'll get that filed down, uh, sanded down, and primed up. And then we're almost ready for the final bit of assembly. There is uh, the fins to go again on the other bit, and two little spiky bits that go on the collar. And the collar actually goes on and comes off, so it's got these little bayonet things, so it's not glued on. So that can be removed, so you can display it in parts or all together. Uh, so I'll get this all glued together and uh, see you in a moment. Right, after um, sanding down, one, one side was fine. The other side did still have some seams. So I've gone over with some sprue goo. Uh, I've started sanding it down and it's coming along quite well. Still got a big sort of blob in there. There was sort of a uh, more of a hole than anything else. So when sanding down on a round, basically you need to make sure you keep it, keep the piece and the sanding stick or file or whatever you're using moving. Not just moving in a straight line, because you otherwise you'll end up with a, a flat. So basically I'm keeping going round and keeping this moving round so there's never any sort of constant flat area. And that gives you an edge that's not bad at all. So I'll go and finish up so both sides of this. Obviously when you're getting closer into the the corner where you don't want to sand down a bit too much, it's harder, you have to go a bit slower. But the process is still the same, just keep, keep it moving and keep that going. Uh, so once that's down to 
how it needs to be. I need to re reprime this. I have obviously glued in the end and put a nice white fingerprint on it in dust, so that will blow off. That's not a problem. Um, get this done, get this primed up, and then we're good to put it together. Uh, the base, I still need to do the darker colour on. I was letting this dry fully before I did that, which is dry now, so a bit later on I'll be able to mask that off. Um, there are three holes in this for little people to stand in. I filled one of them in because I stole that person a little while ago as my little pointy man. So I can show people things on the bills. Uh, so I can't put him back on it. So I figured I'd get rid of the one over the other side and just have the two next to each other talking. So I'll sort those out, but that'll be later in the build. I don't need to do that until much later. I don't, I'm not going to have people standing on the side that are going to get broken off. Uh, so I'm going to get this sanding done and get this uh, painted up. Um, I'm actually going to paint it that way up, so I don't need to worry about covering and masking this. The other end has the large end that fits in, so it doesn't matter what's on the inside of that. So I'll get that done, and then it will be time to assemble it all. So, see you in a moment. Right, the ground, the base has dried. So, the interior piece here needs to be a darker grey. So, I need to mask the rest of it. So, I'm just going to be using normal Tamiya masking tape and basically placing it around the bit that I don't want to paint. Better than that because that's gone on there a bit rough. So let's fill that back up. The thing about the uh, masking tape is it's not overly sticky so you can peel back, peel it off quite easily and reapply it if you don't get it quite right. So I'm going to put this, so little nice straight edges, so it's quite easy to get on. Just going to cover all of those bits down. I'll put a bit more around the outside bit as well to make sure it's not going to go everywhere. Obviously I need to get the edges done as well on this, so I'll get this all covered in and then spray that in the darker darker grey and then we should be ready for some assembly so see you in a moment right while we're waiting for the interior piece of that to dry let's give you a quick look see uh, it looks very similar colour but it should be darker so we'll see how it looks when I actually take the masking off but I think it's going to be okay but I'll leave that to dry before I take the masking off I'm going to get the rest of this assembled now basically the thrusters go on the bottom there they, there is a correct way round because there is one little notch on there and one little cutout point there so you need to get that say the right orientation around there but there's not much contact in there i'm a little bit concerned basically it just sits on top of all of these doesn't really join all the way around so i'm going to put that on and see how it fits but before i do that there's the fins to put on so they basically just fit in each of these grooves some are wider than others. Let's try that one. There we go. So if I can get those in first, I'm going to get the four of those in. And then use the extra thin on the inside, because I'm not going to be able to get to that once it's got the, the bottom bit of the thruster in place. So I'll get the four of those put in, then get that glued on the top. And then that glued onto the top there. Uh, and then that one on the top. That's right. actually that one's not glued. That one just locks in place. So we're not got to glue that in place. Uh, get those on. There's the two little arrow pieces that go around the edge here somewhere. I've got the instructions. So I'll dig out exactly where they go. Uh, but that will be that. So when it's all dry, I'll get it all together and show you what we got. But uh, I'll widen these out a little bit with just as a, a small craft knife that was the one that was particularly thin so I'm just going to give that a little not so much a cut as just sort of a wiggle just to get that a little bit wider because I don't want it to be a loose fit I do want it to be a nice tight fit just like that So I'll get all of them 
put in, glued in, and then come back and show you it all finished. Right, according to the instructions, there should be little grooves on here for these to fit onto, but there doesn't appear to be. But basically they go at the bottom of these posts. So it's gonna go on just there. Actually, they fit quite well without um, grooves. So I'm not too worried. I'm just gonna a little bit of glue on there and get that in the right place. And then I'll just run a little bit more glue down the side so that will get sucked under and lock it all in place nicely. So that's that and the same the other side. There. Now the one thing obviously you may have noticed I haven't done is paint the black on the kit. I did think of several ways of doing it obviously it's going to just going to mean masking and painting I did think of several times of doing it more than ways so what I've actually decided to do is do all of that when it's finished I figure that's the only way of making sure I get good lines between all the stages uh, so that's that is this last piece to put on uh, let's find it the right way round there we go that's that's the cut off and that's that there. So that's going on there. So I'll need to put some glue basically around the tops of these where it's gonna sit. And again, I'll be able to put more in around where the gaps are. I'll be able to see exactly where it's gonna catch. So let's get that again the right way around. Get that in there and I'm just gonna stand that on itself for a bit, give that a chance to dry down properly and then I'll be able to see where I need to add more glue. Obviously you can't see a thing now because the camera is right on top of that bit. Um, I'm going to leave it standing upright so we can see exactly what we're doing and then that will be done so I'll see you in a moment. Right the masking's off, it's not as dark as I thought it was going to be but it's a different grey to the, the surround so it's fine, I don't mind. Um, the base of the rock itself has gone on there again no trouble at all it's on nice and secure so basically all that needs to be done is for that to be fitted on there the little clips do hold it in place and obviously it can still be removed from there again but that holds it quite nicely Obviously you can still get to and see the rockets underneath if you pick it up. But as it stands, that's actually the wrong way around. So, let me take that off again. You may have noticed that there is actually two little holes there and two little pins there. So, if you get it the right way around, when you put it in, and you clip down the two sides, it actually goes all the way down so that holds it even more securely it's on there fine obviously you've got the nameplate at the front for putting that on uh, I have bayoneted on that top piece so we're all ready to go um, that will be the end of this part the first stage the first stage is completed as I say apart from the the final paint job uh, there was a couple of issues with the seam that I'm still not 100% happy with but I couldn't file it down or send it down anymore because obviously then you'd be cutting into the grooves but I say the black's going to go over some of that as well so it's not perfect but it's good enough and that is the end of that part so uh, thanks for watching uh, stay tuned st uh, obviously say subscribe to the channel as ever uh, click on the little alarm button and it will let you know when the next part of the build's coming up which will be stage 2 uh, the next next bit coming up uh well once it's i say all completed then i'll be able to get everything lined up nicely to do the the black painting over the top of it so i postponing that as long as possible <laughs> not that i don't want to do it but i don't want to do it no it, it's going to be tricky um at the back of the instructions here we have <coughs> yeah, still on camera yep uh 
nice diagrams of how everything lines up and so everything is in straight lines although there's big white patches in the middle uh, basically the first stage that I've done is that bit so all this has got to be black the next bit up there is white but then these black bits need to line up with these black bits so what I'm planning on doing is masking basically vertically from there down and then covering the centerpiece as well uh, but that's for later in the build um, depending on how it goes and where I do uh, they need to line up but I think this bit here lines up with that as well so there's lots of bits that need to sort of fit together just right so the black bits will be one of the last bits that I do on this build apart from the decals obviously uh, so yes as ever thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for the next part see you soon bye bye